DJ K Slay. I'm chilling with the homie Del Son. You know what I'm saying? We at the round table. Don D with Global Media. My nigga Jazz the gangster. You know what it is. Gangster. My nigga T is a gangster. Sight Squared, won't you come fuck with the gangster? Gangsters. Brooklyn, we gangsters. What up, what up, y'all? Y'all find out with another second of the round table. Hit my man. Uh, infamous comic king. You didn't go by the common sense. So we know that. That's like the hip hop monitor. Okay. K Slay, K Slay. And um, this segment, we're going to touch on. You know how we do. We go deep. But we're going we gonna to get right into this and touch into the climate of the industry and the streets today and how they intermingle and what my man K Slay thinks about the, the climate right now of the rap industry, entertainment industry slash entertainment. We're going to get into all that. K Long Time, my dude. You know, we personal friends. Yeah, we go way yeah. back, man. You, you got know. a lot of things going on. Yeah. Uh, you got, a, of course, the straight stunting. How is that going? I mean, it's, it's going excellent, you know. I'm blessed. It was just a little idea, something, you know, I wanted to do to try to give a platform for the sisters. And then uh, eight years later, actually Damn, this eight month. Years? Yeah, that's right. May 30th would be eight years. Yeah, and you just was telling me yeah. I was in the first issue. And I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about the, the gangster issue. Yeah, the, yeah, the guy had all you know, the G's up in there. We were fashioning the mix, you know, had you, yeah. Chaz, JoJo Capone, Pistol Pete. Lakey the Kid, yeah. Lakey the Kid. You yeah. said a prince. Man, that was eight years like, ago. Yeah, right? everybody was in there. Nicky Scarf. Yeah, that was eight years that was ago. Crazy. You know? All right, well, I put together this this thing around the table. You this is probably about my tenth, eleventh interview, man. And what I'm doing basically is going around with the relationships that I have in terms of the industry as well as in the streets, I'm getting to take a different perspective because my thing is I don't like the way the streets is is looking now. And I hate the way the entertainment industry, in particular the rap area, is glorifying and perpetuating this gangster lifestyle. Not really knowing how serious it is. Like, it's not even a lifestyle, it's a death style. But you being who you are and the drama king and all that, earlier we was having a conversation on the phone and it was real profound where you started giving it up to me. And I want you to get back into that because I want these kids to really understand as we grow older, it's okay to elevate and mature. Yeah. And um, at one point, you were the drama king. And you even kind of like, I guess, I want to say, hype that. Where you at now and what made you change? What made me change it is that, like I said to you earlier, um, I don't want anybody ever to forget that it's the entertainment industry. It's mm. entertainment. Everything ain't supposed to be real. You understand? You're entertaining the people because from the lifestyle a lot of uh, brothers come from, if they was to really act it out, they'd be indicting themselves. You okay. understand what I'm saying? So. Every time a brother is in a video doing something, it shouldn't be taken like this is actually what it is. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's just entertainment. It's, it's no, not intertwining the two, but WWF is entertainment. No Basketball is entertainment. Football is Movies. entertainment. It's something that people are supposed to enjoy. You know what I'm saying? Now, when I was calling myself the drama king, is when it was battles. Right. Nas versus Jay-Z. Neither one of them is going to kill each other or anything. They're businessmen getting money, but they brought their talent to the table, their art form against each other. Right. You understand? So when I was calling myself the drama king, it was entertaining the battles in hip hop. Somehow, some way, the battles in hip hop turned into beefs. Now, mm. I'm not advocating two brothers that wouldn't know each other, probably, if it wasn't for the hip hop culture, which was a blessing to us Tell where me. you ain't had to have no education. You could be the most illiterate person in the world, but you knew how to put <laughs> words together. Yeah. You didn't need to graduate from college. You didn't need to have a million dollars to get into the game. Right. I'm not going to help push brothers who only met because of this culture that was a blessing to us to kill each other. That's crazy. You understand what I'm saying? Because in the beginning, like, we've been having battles. You're from the old school, so right. you know what Club Harlem World is about. With Busy B was, was battling Kumo cool D on the Bronx, Cold Crush Brothers, Romantic Seeking Fantastic Nexon, Five, and, with the you know, there. Furious Five with Flash. And it was about battles, and after that, they might have went and smoked some blunts together, whatever, and chill. Right. These cats now was on some, you say you don't like somebody record, oh, where he at? I got to go. Come with a video camera too, right? Take myself doing something I know that when can get me in change? trouble. When did it change? I would think it changed probably like about, um, I think it was like around 
maybe around 2006, it started getting a little crazy. Like, it, it, I think it really came when the internet started coming into play because now people kind of wanted to use the internet in a form to embarrass people. You know, mm. before you could have heard a nigga say some shit and it was like, okay, he said it. But now people actually said, okay, I want to show somebody how real I am. So if I say I'll slap the shit out of this nigga, they want to really get the person while he eating with his girl or out chilling somewhere and come, you know, you know put the camera on me while yeah. I run up on him. And that's actually crazy. slap him. You and understand what I'm so. saying? And I think that's when the game started getting into, okay, a battle is no longer a battle. It's if a you say beef. something about me or you say something about the way I rhyme or anything, now it's a beef. I'm not going to be a part of helping brothers kill each other mm. with the blessing that we got. You understand what I'm saying? Like I said, you could this be a complete... This changed lives. Yeah, it, exactly. You could be a complete dummy. Yo, I ain't get past ninth grade, homie. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? I'm being real. Now, I knew how to add, subtract, multiply, divide. Once I knew the math mm. part, and I know how to read very well. Mm -hmm. spell So I said, okay, I'm set. I could tackle the world. So look where I'm at without an education. Look at how many other brothers is at without education because of hip-hop. No now, you mean to tell me I'm going to be sitting there advocating two people killing themselves because somebody said something which they wouldn't know each other if it wasn't for this culture? So that's when I was like, you know, the drama king thing is getting a little crazy because people is taking and running with shit now. So I didn't want to play a part of that. So. Is that is, do you think that became because you started getting older in terms of just maturing or it was just something you witnessed because being firsthand involved with this? It's, it was a, a combination of both. Because it was like, I, like I said, I'm not going to act like no angel. I did dumb shit. Mm -hmm. I put my hands on did. people. We all did that. In hip-hop, out of hip-hop, sometimes your ego might have got the best of you and you, you did something you shit now. But like I was telling you, I was building with, it was a, a young lady I was dealing with in the 90s, and um, her son is 18 now. Mm -hmm. And this kid has three months left of school good kid growing up, always respectful and everything. All of a sudden, he took a turn for the worse. And, you know, he got arrested for, you know, a couple of things mm -hmm. and almost got busted doing some credit card sets. All kind of shit that I couldn't imagine he would do. So she just, like, I don't deal with it, but she's just, you know, from the passive, can you please talk to my son? Mm -hmm. You know, he knows who you are. He respects you. So when I get on the phone with him and he's like, yo, I said, what's your problem? Whatever I could do for you, I'll do for you. Like, how can I help you? But I need to know what's your problem. What is it that got you doing what you're doing? Like, why are you doing it? He said, I want to live that lifestyle. I said, what lifestyle? He said, like the rappers, like the niggas you be playing on the radio and all mm. that. So that kind of made me like, damn. Like, I play a part in this stupid shit too because mm. some of the people that I'm pushing, these young kids want to live that lifestyle. They don't know the difference. And they don't know. And I'm telling them, yo, let me keep it 100 with you, man. Everything that you see ain't really what it is. Everything that glitters ain't gold. You know what I'm saying? I'm not shitting on anybody out here, but it's brothers that, they rent joints for videos. No question. They rent jewelry. They rent minks. I'm telling them everything you see ain't what it is. You got brothers like uh, Jay-Z and Diddy and Ross and some of them that really got it, but a lot of people you probably idolize ain't really like, you know, the, yeah, what you think like you it. are, and you going out your way. You got three months left in school for you to graduate and you get ready to catch felonies and all that because you want to live the life. So it kind of, it makes you stop and think like, yo, man, we got to save these youngers. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, and I don't have a problem with anybody doing whatever kind of music they do because I like that street shit. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to lie. But we got to start incorporating messages in it. Like, don't make it like it's a happily ever after theme when you're living that life and you know it ain't. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? One of, one, one of the things that has, has me kind of disturbed, man, is, is um, me, me being the person that perpetuated that lifestyle and participated in self-genocide in my community, you know, and anyone who really knows me know I went super hard in everything that I did. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a part of redemption and it's my responsibility to kind of start leading these cats in another direction. So you respect me. Because you know I got down, I, I was I, I bust my gun, all that shit. I did it. I did it to the tenth power. And now look at me, you know, partner in the magazine. You know, what I'm saying I done created the Dondi Varadas. I done managed some pretty up and coming artists. artists. I, I done did my thing. I done consulted on Brooklyn Finals movie. Like I did a lot of different stuff. And I would rather you look at me and see the things that I did 
in a positive light as opposed to the things that I did negatively and then champion and follow that. So again, like, you, you doing what you're doing now, we talked about, you know, the evolution because we getting older. And as you get older, your thought process just naturally changes. Exactly. And so for you, was this something pivotal that made you change? Was it one incident, one time factor that you could allude to? I don't think it was just one thing. I just think it was a combination of everything. You understand what I'm saying? You know, and, and a lot of the brothers that I grew up with, you know, like, I'm getting letters, I'm getting calls. I, I had one brother, young brother from my hood, he got, like you said, he, he got locked up, he was probably about 15 years old, he got 28 years in. Nigga told me, yo, Slay, man, don't ever come here, this shit is whack. He said, yo, man, if I could escape to get some pussy, he said, yo, I don't even know what pussy feel like. Mm. He said, if I could escape to get some pussy, I'll call them and tell them, yo, I'm done, come get me, man. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Shit like that make you shit like, Damn, this nigga don't even know what pussy feel like. Mm. Like you understand what I'm saying? Like people don't really think about, you know, the situation when they do things. You the understand what I'm saying? Like it, it's it's like at the end of the day, and I don't know anybody. I don't know nobody that ever told me I don't want to come home. <laughs> I don't know nobody, man. man. You know what I'm saying? When nigga tell me I don't want to come home, then I'm like, okay, that nigga all the way gangster. He he's on some other shit. He's you understand what I'm saying? There, there you go, my nigga. <laughs> That's him right there. Or a nigga that go. And tell the police, hey, I want to go to jail for life. <laughs> Send me away. You understand yeah, what I'm no saying? Question. Nobody wants to be there. We get caught up in situations to be there. But when you're there, you're supposed to be trying to, you know what I'm saying, stay better out yourself. the way, better yourself, you know what I'm saying, and, and try to find a loophole to get the fuck up out that motherfucker. But that's for me, just having them hit me, seeing younger people I know, you understand, go the wrong way, younger sisters, and me being older, and it's like, Nigga, and, and, and then having knowledge yourself is just knowing you're supposed to teach. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Like, you're supposed to show people the way. The truth is the life. Like how you, you made what I'm saying? instead of concealing it, it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to show and prove, not show and tell. So at the end of the day, just knowing everything I know, it just felt like, yo, you, it's almost like, damn, yeah, Slay, you live in a contradiction, man. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Like, you see a young brother and tell him don't do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but then they liable to throw on YouTube and see you get mad at the DJ and go slap. Mm -hmm. Son, like, what, what's, you understand what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? Now it, they, you start, they start telling you, like, your kids, oh, you don't want me to do this way. You want me to do what you say, not what you do. Exactly, and you, it, it doesn't work that way because these kids right now is emulating everything they see us do. How do you adults. think we get them, man? For real, for real, for real. Yo, man, you know what's crazy? Right now, I, I, I'm, I'm ashamed to say that the only way right now is possibly through the music. That's it. It's no other way. Yo, you could go, come on, man, I pull up on my block, I see my nephew and I'm, I pull him up. Yo, what y'all doing, man? Come on, man, this, this, and that. Like, no, no, Uncle Slay, we chilling, this, this, and this, and that. They'll be like this, though. They'll respect what I'm saying to them. When I walk away, <laughs> the niggas like, man, tired of that old school shit, man. No, nigga, what the fuck you think this is, man? We be out here. That's dumb. Yeah, it's their turn. That's dumb. Back in the days, you know how it was, Del? If one of our parents was coming through and we were shooting dice or Everybody drinking, stop. you go, oh shit. You know, you say, there goes Del Mar. Come pop, whatever. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Open the door and everything. Now, I think a mom's would have to be like, um, excuse me? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, hold on. I'm about, might to curse I'm about to hit this six. Hold on. Like, it's, it's no respect. They gone. And like you were saying earlier, a lot of them is, is the crack babies. Yeah. You know what and we got, we can't act like that. That ain't, that ain't have no... It, it, it does. That's some real shit, man. It does. Their parents is crackheads and shit like that. And, and not having a parent. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Or one parent is missing. Not having their father. You understand what I'm saying? Like, so, at the end of the day... This music, is, it seems to be what got them in such a grip. Because all the community centers and all that shit is dead. Nigga ain't going to no community center no more. Unless it's they don't a rap go beat no or a field strip, day strip, trip. A strip club. Exactly. A twerk, a twerk contest. <laughs> so it's like you got you to gotta wheel them in, man. It's like you got to get the baddest chick they know. You know what I'm saying? And you got to get the hottest rapper and tell them, hey, look, we got a little... You know what I'm saying? Seminar going on, whatever, and he'll take a picture and sign something, and maybe hopefully he can get through to him like that. Because other than that, man, man, we, we losing. We losing. We losing. Yeah, we losing right yeah. now with them. We and losing. That's deep, and that's deep you say that, man. But um, again, man, I just wanted to get you on the um, round table, man. You know, it's a yeah. new thing I'm doing. And like I said, we got a personal relationship, and yeah. I wanted to share the views with the world and, and the viewers so they can understand. 
that we got to start making a change. Like, for real, for real. Nah, because, what's up? like, it, it, you know, when I look at all of the things that's going on in the political climate with all of the police brutality, you know, that's not nothing new. But the fact that these cats don't even be knowing their rights, you watch them when the police interact with them, they don't even know how to handle themselves. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? They don't know what to do, what not to do, how you're supposed to move. Like, when I was coming up, my mother and father told me how you speak to the police when, when you're dealing with them and you're in, interacting with them. You never lower your gauge. You look them in the eye. You repeat saying their name to them so that they mm-hmm. know, damn, this kid is sharp. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't have to mouth over them. And, and, and it's, just, it's just a bad way right now. But, yeah. you know, we're going to wrap it up, man, because we, we got a lot in really, really fast, man. But right now, I just want you to tell the people what you got going on as far as the magazine and Whatever other, other ventures you got going on, because you're doing a lot, man. Yeah, I mean, I told, I just said earlier, you, you're sitting on about 10 million, man. Nah, man. You need I'm, some money, I'm come ball off of me. You had to tell me to win, Drew. I'm like, damn, man. I don't want to. I think it's a slave. Make sure. I'm like, man, I think I'm broke, man. But now, on the real, uh, I still got the Straight Step magazine popping. I got the Sister magazine and that, Originators magazine. Um, still doing Hot 97. Still doing Serious Satellite Radio. You understand what I'm saying? I got a couple of. Uh, TV shows in the works. You understand? I'm saying no clownery, <laughs> no me with twenty girls and none of that foolishness. No, no clownery, nah, none of that. Right? About Give your arm um, handles, but they can contact you and all that. IG. Oh uh, man, Instagram is uh, the real DJ K Slay. You know, and um, you know that, that's about it, man. I'm just out here shaking the movie. You know, doing nah, the. Well, you're doing a lot, man. I'm proud yeah. of you, bro. Focus. And I'm glad that we made your acquaintance some time ago. Yeah. Thank you for coming out, Roundtable. Yeah. And don't forget, hold on, that, that last album is coming out this summer, yo. It's called Rhyme and Die. Okay, there you go. Del Son Holloway, The Roundtable. We out. All right, now check this out. This is what y'all got to pay attention to, to. When we was coming up, it was all about competition, friendly competition, though, having a good time. We talked about that earlier with the exactly. cold crush and all that. Everybody talking about what they got. So now we got a challenge going on. Don Diva Sticky Pages against the straight stunting models. Stay tuned for that. What you got to say about that, Slay? <laughs> Yo, man, a- adopt the words of your man, Roberto Duran, when he was fighting Sugar Ray Leonard. No moss? No moss. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you heard it first right here on the round table, man. Look for that coming soon, y'all.